Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about liquid feeds and then we're going to move on from there slightly. And I've also got a giveaway today as well. I've got some of this super soil. I've got five of these to give away today. So let's get into it. Decaying or rotting plant or animal matter or any natural product really is what will power your garden forward whichever format you use whether you want to collect the dead plants from your garden or straw or leaf mold horse manures those sorts of things whatever you want to collect as long as it's a natural product it will rot down and eventually it will feed your plants but knowing how these plants or how these things rot down how long they take what side effects they could have if anything um, those sorts of things will greatly enhance your gardening ability there's no doubt about it those products once they've rotted down will power your garden forward and it therefore is the basis of your garden so understanding and knowing these things is vital if you really want to power your garden forward yet you could Go to a soil bed, dig it over, plant some potatoes and you will get a crop. But if you put manure at the bottom of the trench when you're planting those potatoes, you will get a better crop. So what's happening is as you're growing stuff in that soil, eventually you'll deplete it of, of the natural feed that's within that soil and your crops will diminish. So you've got to keep feeding your soil. And over more recent years, it's become more prevalent that the more you feed your soil, the better your crops will be. Because you're putting life into your soil and it's that life that exists in there. It, they go through their life and they die and that body de decays and that feeds your plants. Or as they're living, they're eating each other and they're going to the toilet and that feeds your plants. But if you've got that life in your soil in the first place, you're going to be doing a much, much better job. Now, I've got four compost heaps um, or composting areas. I've got my, what I call my bad compost heap, which is all the thick woody stuff that I know is going to take a long time to break down. All the weed roots, all of the thorny stuff, all of the thick wood that this plot may produce at times. It all goes in there because I know it's going to be a long term thing for that to break down. I've got my good compost heap which is at the front. I don't put any weeds in there whatsoever. It's all the sappy plant stuff as it comes off or as the plants are dying, all goes in there. But it, both of those are cold composting and both of those require time and its own natural process to do it. Then I've got my two hot composting areas. I've got the hot composting bin that was kindly given to me to to test and provide feedback and then the DIY one that I made myself as uh, in in that tunnel and they're all producing at different rates for different times but the main and important factor is that they're all producing they're all producing life for the plots but I have to I have to say that that's not enough and I'll never produce enough compost that I need here. So I have to supplement them and there are various stages of supplements I go through. The first is liquid feeds, which is we'll move on to and have a look at now. So these are my two main feed barrels and they're right at the front of my polytunnel, almost central to the plot. And I've got a nettle feed and a comfrey feed. The nettle feed is near enough, mostly nitrogen and provides that sappy growth for your plants to get your plants from seedling up to a size where you can start to be able to harvest it from. And I sort of feed all my brassicas with it, all the leafy greens like lettuce and chard and those sorts of things, some kales. Um, the other one is my comfrey and I grow my own comfrey. I've got a big bed of it down the back of the plot and that's for potassium. It's a lovely potash rich feed at the end of the day brilliant for things like my peppers uh, my aubergines with tomatoes and i use it on things like beetroot and my potatoes as well it's really good for that end of stage feed to get things to ripen and mature so there's those two feeds now i have two more feed barrels here this one is oh, 
nettles. Uh, this one is all the uh, weeds, and this one is all the weed roots. There are some weeds I won't compost, even on the bad compost heap, and that's things like nettles, ducks, thistles. They're really quite pernicious, and they will regrow in that compost heap at the back, so um, all my annual weeds go on that one at the back, but these really pernicious ones, I like to make a liquid feed out of them. So this, this one's, it's actually mostly nettles, this one, but there are a few thistles and docks in there, and I just cut them up and put them in. Again, it's a great sort of nitrogen feed, and the same really with the other one, um, which is all the weed roots. And eventually, you know, by next spring, when I come to replenish these, start the, the next season's batches off, all the sludge that comes out of them will go onto one of the compost heaps, either the good one at the front or that one over there. So they're really handy to have those, all those feeds and they supplement any compost that I can make for the feed value that I need for the, the, the allotment plot. So nothing's wasted, even the weeds. Um, and I even grow stuff to try and produce more feed for the plot to keep everything as productive as possible and that's vitally important especially when you consider that some of the beds I might be getting three crops a year out of three different you know start to finish crops out of them keeping your plot productive and keeping that feed value up keeping that life in your soil is vital and I've got a couple of more things to go through next <laughs> Greenside Up is dedicated to helping gardeners of all ages, levels and experience. And if you hit the big white subscribe button, which is just underneath this video, then you'll be able to follow along with me, follow and see all the results of all the trials and things that I'm doing and how things are progressing on the plot. And you'll be able to follow on and do that. And the best thing about it all is it's completely free of charge. Cost you nothing. All you've got to do is pick your finger up and tap that white subscribe button there we go <laughs> now even with all that knowing that I can never make enough compost I occasionally buy some in and I'll try and buy a bulk load for a reasonable price and just absorb that cost that's part of my hobby and part of what I want to achieve so you know rather than go down the pub I'd rather spend it on compost um, even then having said that with that I get uh, manure delivered to the plot now and again for a very very small cost around here uh, I know plenty of people get that for free but even then you still perhaps don't have enough compost or manures or liquid feeds that you would possibly need so I'll supplement that with fertilizers and I'll go back to the old ways that I learned when I first start got started gardening going back to fish meal and, and blood meal and those sort of old things, which you could still get. And I've relied on those heavily over the years, quite a lot. And even those people who are watching now that have watched this channel from the start, will have seen me using blood fish and bone an awful lot. I'm finding I'm using it less and less now, because simply because I'm getting to the plot to, to a stage where it's looking after itself. I am getting enough compost out of it or, you know, whatever needs to be on. I'm using it less and less. I used to use a sack a year, I probably only use a quarter of a sack now. But there's another thing you can do. If you can't put the compost on when you're into your plot to put the life in, you can grow the life yourself. You can make a, a very simple compost tea. And all that involves is getting a sack or a netting bag or something, putting a few handfuls of compost in it, and suspending it, you put a cane across the top of your barrel, tie the netting bag to it, let it hang in the water. And I do this at home because I aer aerate mine. I've got an, a, a pond pump at home with a couple of tubes coming off and some air stones and I aerate that and that multiplies the life that's in there. And you can add things like uh, molasses or treacle to it to help feed that life and you'll get a super rich, super concentrated life that you can actually spray onto your soil. It's compost tea, you look it up, it's everywhere, everyone uses it. It's nothing new whatsoever. We've been using it for millennia. But the method has changed into making it. And what I do twice a year is I'll spray that over my complete garden just to add that life if it hasn't had any compost or manure 
that particular year just to further back up and bolster things but say i do that at home that's why it's never really appeared on on video before but there is now something new on the market that um i have seen tests for i've seen the results of and they've worked very well and it's that super soil um stuff that i mentioned at the start so i've got some of this and i've got one two three four I've got five to give away. Each one of these will treat an acre of garden. So even if you've got three or four allotment plots, you're not gonna use all that. But I'm gonna give these away just simply if you reply to this topic underneath. And I'm gonna to have to say that I'm gonna to have to keep it, the winners to within the United Kingdom simply because postage costs become really prohibitive. Um, so yeah, just to the UK people, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, that will treat a whole acre and that will put the life into your soil that it's possibly missing if it doesn't get compost or manure. You can go and look it up on the website. As I say, I've seen the trials and tests I've got one that um, I'm currently testing. I've got no results to show you because I've only just started using it recently myself. Comes highly recommended. Uh, Steve Digwell Greenfingers did a little clip on my Tips and Clips 6 video. You can go and have a look at that. I'll put a little link up here. You can go and have a look at that. And Steve shows you how to apply it to the soil. And it's Steve's test that I've seen um, using this stuff. So yeah, there we go. By the way, each one of them is worth 40 quid. <laughs> so, you know, you're not doing too badly. But what you might want to consider doing, if you win one of these, share it with a friend. There we go. <laughs> so your own plot made, uh, compost made from any natural product that you're composting down, allowing to rot and decay, will put life back into your soil. The liquid feeds will supplement that if necessary, if you don't have enough compost or manures, which let's face it, 99% of us don't have. And even then from there, if you still don't have enough, you can always resort to bagged fertilizers, which is something I'm doing a lot less, but I still use a little bit, partly because I've still got some from the last time I bought a lot of it. I used to buy quite a lot of it in one go. Um, and also the compost tea, you know, standard compost tea will also add life to your soil. I add it twice a year because if you're putting it onto a depleted soil, there's not actually that much in the soil apart from each other for that compost tea, for the microbes in the compost tea to feed on. And if you can't make that, if you haven't got the facilities to make that, then you can use something like the super soil. And don't forget, just replying to this topic, if you're in the UK, I've got five sachets of that to give away. Enough, each one will treat an acre. Uh, you can share that with a friend or two um, if you win that. So just reply underneath and you're automatically entered. And I'll, I'll draw it at the weekend perhaps and uh, announce the winners. As, as I've done that. But that's it for today. I hope that's given you a little bit of an insight of how I go through my year um, and how I feed the soil to get the best out of it as I can. I'm nowhere near where I would like to be with, with that whole scenario. I'm probably around 70 or 80 percent. I would like to be able to do more and put more into the soil, but that's something I need to work on over the next couple of years and will be. But that's it for today. Please look after yourselves, everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you all very, very soon. Ciao, Rana.